Another approach to learning trigonometry involves something called the unit circle. Let me start with a circle, and I'll add a set of axes. These are x and y. Now we've already done some things with something that might be considered akin to the unit circle. Let me see if I can remind you. I drew a circle and I said, note that this is 45 degrees or pi over four. And by that, I meant that this angle here has its initial side on the x-axis, the positive x-axis, and its terminal side is 45 degrees away or pi over four radians away. And then I said, if this is one pi over four, then this is the next pi over four. That's two pi over fours. Two pi over fours is pi over two. That's 90 degrees. If you add a third pi over four, you get to this point. That's three pi over four. The next pi over four puts you at four pi over four, or pi. Then we have five pi over four, six pi over four, or three pi over two, seven pi over four, and eight pi over four, which is two pi. I actually find it easier to count pi over fours, but you can also just add 45 degrees. Starting at zero, you have 145 degrees, 245 degrees is 90, 345 degrees is 90 plus 45, or 135, and so on. We can also do that same exercise with 30 degrees, which is pi over 6. I have pi over 6, then I have a second pi over 6, that's 2 pi over 6s, and 2 pi over 6 is pi over 3. So that's pi over 3 right there. And that's 60 degrees. Here's a third pi over 6. Well, 3 pi over 6s is pi over 2. We got there two different ways. 2 45s is 90. 3 30s is 90. 2 pi over 4s is pi over 2. 3 pi over 6s is pi over 2. And then we can just keep going. So let's see, we have 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6 is pi, 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, 9 pi over 6 is the same as 3 pi over 2, 10 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6, and 12 pi over 6 is 2 pi. Let me go back and label those. We had 1, 2, 3, 4 pi over 6, that's 2 pi over 3, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6 was pi, 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6 is 4 pi over 3. I'm just reducing the fractions. 9 pi over 6 is 3 pi over 2. 10 pi over 6 is 5 pi over 3. 11 pi over 6. And 12 pi over 6, which is 2 pi. Now we've seen this before. I haven't quite I haven't labeled it this way quite this way before, but we have seen the idea. We've talked about it. And the only thing I need to add to make this thing a, a unit circle is that its radius is 1. The radius of this circle is 1. When you reduce any triangle, say this one right here, to having a hypotenuse of one, then it simplifies all the right triangle trigonometry that you need to do. Let's look at this point right here. 
it's one unit away from the center of the circle because the radius of the circle is one. Remember at one point in our discussion about right triangle trigonometry, we said that x could be written as r cosine theta and y could be written as r sine theta. That means that any point on the plane we can think of as x comma y can be found using the formula, if you will, r cosine theta comma r sine theta. Well, in this case, r is 1. No matter where I am on the circle, my radius is 1. So I'm going to change all of my r's to 1. And in fact, because of the property of multiplication, that means I can just erase them. So on the unit circle specifically, points along the outside of that unit circle can be described as being cosine comma sine. X comma Y is just cosine comma sine of whatever angle you're at. Let's use that green point that I found and describe its coordinates. It's the cosine of an angle comma the sine of an angle. What angle? Well, we're at 2 pi over 6, so pi over 3. So it's cosine pi over 3, sine pi over 3. We know that the cosine of pi over 3 from our table is a half, and that the sine is root 3 over 2. Those are the coordinates of that point. I could go out x and up y. I could figure out what the, if this is 1, I could figure out what the x and y values were here. But that's not actually all that straightforward. I can do it much more easily by knowing that x can be written as cosine y. It's actually r cosine y, but remember that in this case, my radius is 1. So on the unit circle, not any circle, but on the unit circle, I can write the coordinates of any point along the edge of the circle using cosine comma sine. Cosine of the angle, sine of the same angle, if I know what the angle is, I can uh, write the coordinates of the point. Now this is true for any point on the unit circle. Let's call this angle here alpha. I'm going to use something quite different. The coordinates of that point are cosine alpha, sine alpha. Even though alpha is not what we consider one of our nice angles, one of our familiar angles that we can just look up at sine or its cosine on a table, it still applies. In fact, if I tell you that alpha is, let's say, 9 pi over 10, I can get away with that approximation here by noticing that this would be 10 pi over 10, and this is something less than that. And I'm just using that value as a way to illustrate my point. Now, that means that the coordinates of my pink point here are cosine of 9 pi over 10, comma, the sine of 9 pi over 10. Now 9 pi over 10 is not one of my friendly angles, so I'm going to have to use my calculator. I'm also going to have to make sure when I use my calculator that, it, that it's in radian mode. So let's go ahead and do that. Mode, I'm using a TI-84 by the way. I select radians, it was in degrees from earlier problems I was working. Now I'm going to quit, and so now I'm back on my home screen but I can see at the top that I'm in radians. So now I just need to type in cosine. It opens parentheses for me. 9 pi over 10, close the parentheses, and I get negative 0 0.951. Now I'll do the same thing for sine. The sine of 9 pi over 10 is positive 0 0.309. The coordinates of this point are negative almost one, positive about a third. Negative, well this would be one here because this is a radius, right? It's not quite there, it's negative 0.95, positive a third. Well, this is also one, so it looks like it's about a third. 
So these coordinates are the coordinates of this pink point here if this angle is 9 pi over 10. So just because my pink point is not one of my nice angles doesn't mean I can't apply this, this property. Any point on the unit circle can be described as the cosine of the angle you have to travel to get from 0 to that, to that point, 0 to that point, um, the cosine of that angle, comma, the sine of that angle. Now I can actually prove that that point is on the unit circle because for any triangle, and I'll use my, I'll use this one here again. Remember that we tend to label the bottom of the triangle, the base of the triangle, x, because we go out x units before we start going up, and then we go up y units. So x comma y to get to that point is the same as cosine comma sine, right? That's how we get there. But also notice that this is a right triangle, so I can use Pythagoras. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Well, in this case, r is 1. So I get x squared plus y squared equals 1. And for any given point, I'm going to use this one here. Where am I? This one right here. If I replace the values, negative 0 0.951 squared plus 0 0.309 squared, I should get 1. Let me do that work off screen. I actually got 0 0.999882. Squeeze in all six decimal places there. And the reason I didn't get one exactly is because these are rounded numbers. Remember, this was an approximation. These are the only way to write the exact values of those of those coordinates. When I plug these into my calculator, I wrote down approximate approximate values. So if I want to prove that these coordinates, these coordinates are uh, belong to a point on the unit circle. I actually have to type in the cosine of 9 pi over 10 all squared, and then the sine of 9 pi over 10 all squared, and add those together. That would give me 1. So since I'm approximating here, this is as close to 1 as I can get with values rounded to the nearest thousandth. That's pretty much it for the unit circle. You don't have to memorize these values, although I know a lot of you will probably try at least. Remember that your first quadrant contains 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and pi over 2. Those correspond to the values in the table that we said we were going to work on. And once you have the sine and cosine for these three values, and in fact, you, you should now have these two values as well. Once you have the sine and cosine for those, let me put this here, sine and cosine. Once you have the sine and the cosine for any of these values, you, all, you can also find the tangent because the tangent is just the sine value divided by the cosine value. Once you have the tangent, you can find the cotangent. Once you have the sine and the cosine, you can find the secant and the cosecant because those are just the reciprocals of the values in the first three rows. We've talked about that before. We've also talked about the fact that it doesn't really matter how big the triangle is. So, for example, if I take this triangle here, which is just short of having a radius of 1, its angle here is still pi over 6, so its sine is still going to be 1 half. If I take this triangle here, which is well over 1 for its hypotenuse. Its angle is still pi over 6, so its sine is still going to be a half. So it doesn't matter that I'm working on the unit circle now and before I was working on any circle, or vice versa. These values are all going to be the same. The other thing you need to know is that you don't really need the rest of this chart. I got my pen way too big there. Something else that I was doing. You don't really need the rest of this chart. You don't need to write down all of these angles because we know how to find the reference angle. The reference angle for 5 pi over 6 is this angle here. How big is this angle? It's the same size as this angle, so it's pi over 6. Once we know the reference angle, we know the sine of that angle is going to be the same as the sine of this angle, plus or minus 
a different sign, S-I-G-N. Because it's sign I'm looking for, S-I-N-E, it's actually going to have the same sign. They're both going to be positive. And that's because all students take calculus. All trigonometric ratios are positive in the first quadrant. Sine is also positive in the second quadrant. Tangent and, and cosine are negative here, but sine is positive. If I were looking for the cosecant, say, of 11 pi over 6, the first thing I would do would be to find the cosecant of this reference angle. The reference angle is still pi over 6. So I'm going to find the cosecant of pi over 6, and then say only cosine is positive in quadrant 4. Well, cosine and its cousin, secant, right? 1 over cosine is secant. That's also positive here. But sine is not positive here, and therefore cosecant, 1 over sine, is not positive here. That means that once I find the secant, sorry, the cosecant of pi over 6, which happens to be 2, then applying this mnemonic, I find that it's actually negative 2. So I don't need the rest of this chart. I don't only need the first quadrant, and I really only need sine and cosine. How much of it you actually write down is entirely up to you. But the more you force yourself to use as little as possible from a table, the better you'll get at remembering values and, and, and figuring out where you are in the unit circle. That, that it sort of forces you to practice. So yeah, you can write down a whole great big table if you want to, but it, it really won't help you learn trigonometry. Now, as I said earlier in the quarter, we're learning trigonometry in this class mostly by the right triangle approach. We're just going to bring in the pieces that we need from the unit circles so that we're up to speed with what other mathematicians know about trigonometry. And the unit circle is a very useful tool. So with that in mind, rather than giving you a whole separate page and a whole separate assignment for the other topics in this section, the other subtopics, I'm just going to add a couple of slides to this video, and we're going to call that good for section 5.1. The first one, or the second slide, will be about terminal points on the unit circle, and the second one, or the third topic, is about the reference number. So let's talk about terminal points on the unit circle. All right, here's another unit circle. I'll label the radius 1 so we know it's a unit circle and not some other gen generic circle. And I'm going to take, instead of going, uh, instead of drawing lines out from the center this time, I'm going to start here at zero and go out along the circumference to some generic stopping point. Now I called it a stopping point just now, but it's what the textbook and others call the terminal or a terminal point. And it means just that. It's the, it's the place around the outside of the circle, around the circumference of the unit circle, where you terminate, where you stop. That point, as we've already discussed, has coordinates, cosine theta, sine theta. Remember, we're on the unit circle, so instead of r cosine theta, I have just cosine theta, because r is 1. But what is theta? Well, it's this angle right here. It's the th angle through which you had to rotate as you watched a bug crawl along this curved wall, for example. But notice that coordinates are, are given by the same, I want to call it a formula. It's not really a formula. It's, they're given by the same cosine comma sine representation as we had previously. So when, when I talk about a terminal point, I'm referring to this point, you could think of it as being the point at which you stopped crawling along the curved wall, or you can think of it as the end of the line segment that radiates out from the center of the circle. It's, a, it's the same point regardless. So this is very, very closely asso associated with what we've done before. I just want you to be familiar with this new terminology. There are four really important points that you will see and you will use many, many times in your mathematical career. By that, I mean, if this is your last math class, you'll use them quite a bit this quarter. But if you go on, you'll use them even more. They keep coming up over and over again. 
These are, because this is the unit circle, I know this has a, a radius of one, so this distance here is one, and the coordinates there are x is one, y is zero. Up here, the coordinates are x is zero, y is one. Out here on the left-hand side, I have x is negative one, y is zero, and way down here, I have x is zero, y is negative one. Remember, too, that these angles are zero, pi over two, that's 90 degrees, pi, that's 180 degrees, and this one's harder to memorize. It's three pi over two. And so we can say with quite easy confidence that the cosine of pi is equal to negative one. Because if you simply look at this circle and look at the coordinates here, these coordinates are negative one zero at this point. This is where our theta equals pi, right? From along here, this is my terminal point in this case. Theta equals pi, and the cosine of theta is given by this coordinate here. The sine of theta, the sine of, of pi, my pen, the sine of pi is zero. The sine of pi over two is one. Find the angle pi over two, that's 90 degrees, and look at its second coordinate. The cosine of three pi over two, can you find it? Find the angle three pi over two, and look at the first coordinate. It's zero. These are all very important values. And as I said before, they'll come up over and over again, all four of these two coordinates each, right? So there's actually eight things there. And when I am asked, when I ask myself, or when I, when I need the value for say the, the, the sine of three pi over two, my mind goes to the unit circle. I go three quarters of the way around and I think, what's the Y coordinate there? That's how I do it. The sine of three pi over two is negative one. So these are very special terminal points, but remember that any terminal point, you can use any, the cosine comma sine to find the coordinates of any terminal point on the unit circle. You don't need the R. You could put the R in there. It wouldn't be wrong, but the R is one because we're on the, rate, the unit circle and the radius is one. So these are special points, but the terminal point is any point on the unit circle associated with the distance in, in angular movement and rotational movement that you've had to go around the outside of the unit circle to get to that point. The only other thing we need to discuss now is something called the reference number. I'll use another slide for that. Okay, in the, on the previous slide, I labeled a point. I think I actually drew the line segment out from the center of the circle first. And then I said that this point was the terminal point for that angle and you got there by traveling along the outside of the circle from starting from theta equals zero. So here's my theta, and in this case theta is, looks like it's about pi over three or 60 degrees. It could be anything though, it could be 59 or 61.8. My point is that we call this point, no pun intended, the terminal point, and on the unit circle, we can find its coordinates if we know the angle through which we had to travel or through which we had to rotate to get to that point or to be pointing in that direction. What I want to talk about now, though, is something called a reference number. We've actually met this before under a slightly different name. I'm going to take a different angle. Let me see. I'll, I'll get my pen. I'll pick a different color here. Let's go with green. Let's put a, a point over here. To get to that point, you'd have to travel a little farther. And so you'd have a different theta value. I'll put that one in green. That goes with the green arc on the circle. Let's draw a line segment out to it. And the reference number, your textbook uses T equals, it's very, very simple. It's the same as the reference angle. Remember I was I mentioned that your textbook calls that theta bar. 
I've also seen it written as theta prime, and in a recent video I was watching, I saw it called theta sub r for reference. So lots of different um, notations that could be used there. The reference number t is equal to the radian or angle value for theta bar, the reference angle. It's just a different sort of approach. It's a different perspective. It's how far did you, it, how far would you have to go back from 180 degrees? Or if it's down here, how far would you have to move beyond 180 degrees? Back from 180 degrees. But in this case, it's how far would you have to move back from 180 degrees or pi to get to this point here. It's this inside angle, not the outside angle we had to travel to get to this point, but the rest of 180 degrees. So what we were before calling a reference angle, this section calls a reference number. That's all there is to it. You can really almost get away uh, when studying trigonometry without knowing what a terminal point is. It's just a point on the unit circle, and we already know how to find its coordinates. You can also almost get away with not knowing what a, t what a reference number is. It's just the reference angle. So you really already know about these things. We're just kind of giving them different names in this chapter. So that's all I'm going to do for section 5.1, the unit circle. In the next video, I'm going to look at section 5.2. That one could, be, could end up being just one video as well, although there's at least one concept in there that I think is going to require its own video. It's a pretty special, important piece of information. But that's it for 5.1. So I'll see you in the next video.